There were buds on my lilac bush weeks ago. The crocuses have come and gone at my house. The garlic is already several inches tall. We're all seeing very early signs of spring this year. But this isn't just a random warm spring. At Paul Smith College, students actually gather data on this stuff every year. And the multi-decade trend line points clearly to the effects of climate change. One data point, the emergence of ground bees on campus. We're there when it happens on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Clarkson University, offering over 95 programs of study with campuses in the Hudson Valley, Central, and Northern New York. More at clarkson.edu. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Friday, March 29th. First up, Governor Kathy Hochul and state lawmakers concede that there's no chance that they'll meet the state's budget deadline of April 1st, which is the day after Easter. But they say they intend to come back next month to try to reach an agreement on the spending plan. Karen DeWitt reports. Senate Budget Bill, Senate Print 8302, an act to make appropriations for the legal requirements of the state debt service. The legislature approved one budget bill to authorize the state to continue paying its debts. They then adjourned until next Tuesday, April 2nd, one day after the budget is due. They left the rest of the spending plan, including how to distribute school aid, pay for ever-increasing costs for health care, and an affordable housing program for later. On the Senate floor, Finance Committee Chair Liz Krueger, speaking on Thursday, says with Good Friday and Easter Sunday approaching, there was not enough time left to vote on everything. We are working hard to reach agreement on billions of dollars of spending and revenue that since we are planning to go home today um, with Good Friday tomorrow and Easter on Sunday, It is not realistic that we will get a complete budget done by April 1st. Senate Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins told reporters that while discussions continue, there is still no agreement on the major issues. We're in the middle of the middle, so yes. Sticking points include Governor Hochul's proposal to alter school aid distribution and end what's known as Halt Harmless. That guarantees that all school districts do not receive less aid than they did the previous year. The Senate and Assembly oppose that plan. They want to instead have the state education department conduct a study to change the state's foundation aid formula at a future time. They say the sudden cuts would be too disruptive to schools. Lawmakers also want to restore Hochul's cuts to the Medicaid budget, including to home health care programs. Senator Stuart Cousins says lawmakers want to seek a federal waiver, similar to one granted to California. It could yield $4 billion over the next three years and avoid cuts. She says the affordability of health care is a national crisis, and the temporary waiver would help plug gaps until a long-term solution is reached. It's not easy, it's not within reach, and that's why these creative solutions you know, are what we use as part of the strategy to make sure that New Yorkers have access to quality, affordable care. The governor and legislature have also not yet worked out an affordable housing plan. It could include a new tax credit for developers and stronger tenant protections. And they have yet to agree on a plan to crack down on retail theft. Hochul and lawmakers had raised the possibility of a conceptual agreement on the budget before breaking for the holiday, but the hope was fading, says Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty. I can't predict a handshake deal. I guess I use the analogy that when the governor does a budget and resolutions that we're in the same galaxy, I think where the budget negotiations are now, I feel like we're on the same planet. I don't know if we're in the same country, in the same state yet, but we're at least on the same planet. Lawmakers, before they adjourned for the long weekend, approved an extender bill sent by the governor. It will keep government running and pay state workers through Thursday, April 4th. Hochul, in a statement, says she believes a final budget agreement is within reach. Last year, the budget was more than one month late. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt for the New York Public News Network. Glens Falls basketball star Jimmer Fredette will compete in the upcoming Summer Olympics. 
Fredette was an all-time leading scorer in high school. He was then considered one of the best collegiate basketball players during his time at BYU, where his team made it to the Sweet 16. Team USA announced this week that Fredette is one of the players who will compete on its three-on-three team in Paris this summer. That's a new half-court style of basketball that was recently introduced at the Olympics. Meanwhile, another former Glens Falls player is headed to the NCAA Elite Eight tournament this weekend. Joe Girard III is a senior at Clemson. His team, which is seated sixth in the tournament, will face off against fourth-seeded Alabama tomorrow night. Every spring, Paul Smith's college professor, Kurt Steger, monitors the same sandy hillside on campus for the first sign of ground bees. The date comes earlier and earlier because of climate change. And this year, that date was Wednesday, around noon. And I happen to be there. So here's this herd up north. Hi, I'm Kurt Steger, a professor at Paul Smith's college. And we're here on the sunny, south-facing slope of Essex Hill, here on the Paul Smith College campus. And we're watching the first bees of spring as they emerge from the ground. Yay, bees. They spent the whole winter and last fall underground, wrapped up in little papery capsules that their mothers made a year ago. Um, The mothers went and collected pollen from the pussy willows, which are just down the road here, made a little pea-sized ball of the pollen and moistened it with some sweet nectar laid an egg on it, wrapped it up in a papery substance that they made, and had it buried in the ground about a foot underground, and then the mothers died. So the whole last year, there's a whole community of bees buried in the hillside, wrapped up like mummies in little plastic packages. Uh, And now that the snow is gone and the sun has warmed the ground, they've woken up, basically, and uh, emerged into the sunlight and Rather than being little grubs underground, they now have wings. So I just saw one cruising, just went past. Once it's sunny, they'll hover like about a foot above the ground, and the males will be cruising around waiting for the females to show up, (laughs) basically. So literally cruising. I began doing this just informally as a sort of a nature journal uh, 30-something years ago. Well, back in 1990. Uh, when I lived on campus here and I walked by and would notice these things and then realized, gosh, we're building up a nice record here. So uh, I built it into the science of climate change class that we teach here. So we've made a formal trail marking off where we watch every year uh, when these bees come out here, when the ice leaves the lakes, when the red maples bloom, when the spotted salamanders migrate across Keys Mills Road. We keep those records. We match them up with how the temperature has been changing and uh, look for patterns And basically what we find is uh, warmer springs, they come out earlier and they do what they're doing earlier. And that, of course, is what we're going to see going forward as the Adirondacks continue to warm. Well, it's really spring now. That's Kurt Steger, professor of natural sciences at Paul Smith College. Kurt sent me a plot of the date the male bees have emerged since 1990. And the data shows the bees are coming out 12 days earlier now another clear indication of climate change. Hey, speaking of climate change, we are launching a new series, a year-long series about climate change in the North Country, and we want to get your thoughts on what questions we should ask, what stories we should do, stuff that you're noticing. We have a survey going right now, and we'd love for you to fill it out. Go to ncpr.org slash climate survey. That's ncpr.org slash climate survey, or you'll just see it right in the middle of our homepage, ncpr.org. It'll just take a few minutes and really help us in our research as we prepare for this series on climate change. Thanks so much for filling out the survey. Again, that's ncpr.org slash climate survey. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Oscar Sarmiento of Potsdam and Mark Corey of Watertown. Have a super weekend. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.